Well, hi guys, welcome back to Karin's Orchid, my orchid channel. Uh, we just finished our dog swim. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, the snow's gone. So, I feel that I really need to sing this little tune. What high in snow comes up in the bling bling. Little birdie finds an old bread crumb. Yeah, it really looks like the city dump here. Look at all the stuff and garbage. People have been dumping here. Yeah. It's a secondary uh, city dump, in my opinion. Yeah, the huge trailers uh, usually park here and just dump stuff. Um, so there's a lot to be cleaned and sorted out here in this area, really. But there is going to be some more snow come Christmas. So it's going to be a white, white Christmas, even this year. And it's going to cover all this shit. I've been sorting out a lot of my orchids, uh, looking, uh, looking for some pests and other kinds of stuff going on, if there still is any. It's been a couple of weeks since I first used the um, uh, biological uh, pesticide, so to speak, little bugs, Oreo, whatever it was called. <laughs> I would make a pop-up here of his name. But it, it, it really didn't seem to work out that well. But we should take a closer look at it. We're back again in my living room and kitchen area and stuff. So, come along with me and view some goodly good stuff instead of this <laughs> yeah, pile of garbage, yeah? Well, isn't it a lovely splash? At this time, I'm going to start by showing you the uh, amaryllis in bloom. Almost all of them are in bloom right now, for the moment. This one, and this little one, this little cutie is my favourite. I kept this one alive since last Christmas. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of proud. And a couple of buds there, yet to come. But anyways, good to see it. Uh, what else? Yeah, this lemon sorbet is there. This one is new for this video. Also kind of good looking. And see the pink one? Um, if you look at the picture, it's supposed to look like this. So it's a better pink color in reality than it was supposed to look like according to the picture. So I'm kind of pleased. Uh, let's uh, walk around this little table <laughs> so I can reach the other ones. Um, here's another one. Kind of, uh, kind of pale-ish, isn't it? Uh, according to the picture, it's supposed to look like this, apple blossom. But since it's called apple, it always means kind of pale-ish colors, even in the orchid world with just a little hint of perhaps green or yeah as for this one green to the center yeah look at it yeah it's kind of nice anyways even though it wasn't as expected but uh yeah surprises are kind of great sometimes uh this one on the other hand picture <laughs> flower yeah Kind of similar, so um, I like it. I like all of them. I still have a few left to open up, so for you to see. But that was a short update on the Amaryllis. <laughs> but look at the colours. What a splash, isn't it? It makes me happy every time I look at it. Oh, shall we say every time I open my front door. <laughs> this is the very first sight for my eyes, so. Ah, and this gorgeous little... Cymbidium, wild pink, is of course still out. <laughs> Would it be strange if it wasn't uh, kind of recent purchase, as you know, if you watch my previous video. Anyways, uh, I'm up to loads of stuff today. As I said earlier, at the city dump, second city dump, <laughs> as I said earlier, at the um, secondary city dump, um, I've been cleaning off all of my orchids. Let me give you a little ride here. Here's my bathroom, <laughs> bathtub. Yeah, Ringo Readers, Ringo Stylus, Bandicoot Stylus, and Angrecums. 
They all got showered today and really, really well flushed as well. Loads of them, most part of them, are sitting in simply um, charcoal. It's getting kind of dry for them, especially now during the winter month when it's kind of dry and hot inside. But uh, but not for this one, the Ungrecum um, Witch Eye. It's in semi hydro and it likes it in there, really does. It's not getting dry, so um, I wish I could keep these guys in semi hydro as well. But yeah, 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 wishful thinking, it won't work. And a few Cattleyas, of course. Which has been uh, an epidendrum, yay, and Stamfordianum, never to forget that one. Um, you see, uh, why I did it, um, I planted, shall we say, the little bug, the little biological uh, pest treatment, Aureus, a uh, little bug or whatever it was called, um, amongst my plants in order for them to eat the eggs and the mature animals of the exotic thrips, which has caused loads of damage, especially to this one. My beautiful, uh, my pride and joy, so to speak, Epidendrum Stamfordianum. Well, yeah, normally it should be in bloom by now. With loads of cascading uh, regimes arching over. Yeah, what's this? It's his new, one of its newest uh, canes. Not growing well. Should be up here. And spiking. But, yeah, here's the other one, the second one down there. It's also been attacked by, sorry, uh, it's also been attacked. <laughs> It's also been attacked by thrips and other nasty creatures. Look at this leaf. Thrip damage. Yeah. News leaf down there. Thrip damage. So no wonder. And with the cooler temperatures, I refuse to switch on my heating elements. I, first of all, I thought it was a little bit too hard in here. So I switched them off uh, all together. And I, well, I kept them switched off. I liked it. Uh, then I uh, come to think of the fact that some of my orchids may need a drop in temperature for a certain amount of time throughout the year. So I just figured, why not? It could be good for them. But for some warm growers, the cool time was a little bit too extended, I think. They would have made do with about simply one week. Would have been enough, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's proceed. Yeah, I've been moving stuff around and, yeah, Vanders should be as close to the window as possible, of course, getting the best light source. Yeah, looks like this in here, for you who haven't already seen it, what my growing area looks like. Um, but what disappointed me was the fact that this orchid, the one called Burgara, or Aliciara, Nelly Isla, the one that I promised you guys that I would succeed in growing this time around. Yeah, look at its newest growth. Soft and mushy leaf to the center. And that's not all, yeah? The horror movie doesn't end there. Look, thrips. Yeah, where do they come from? With an Oreo bug here, lurking and all. So I don't think uh, it really works that great. Or maybe I should have planted out twice the amount of the bugs than I did. I used bugs suitable for 10 square meters, so maybe it wasn't enough. But I, I don't believe in it anymore. Uh, I tried it out and only spread, so too bad, really. So I've been through and I have gone over all of my orchids, flushed and watered and sprayed them with a natural uh, treatment. So I used this one for all of my orchids, uh, almost all of them. I left the dendrobiums behind since they are allergic to being sprayed by any kind of pesticide. So avoid the dendrobiums. Really, really my... Uh, a good advice coming from me, yeah. I don't keep that many dendrobiums since it always seems to get or catch.
thrips and on top of it all never blooms for me since I haven't got the right temperatures so uh, well anyways this is the one I used spider mite SMC control but it works for uh, other stuff as well leaf wash and shine makes the leaves look shiny and, and glossy uh, natural insect eliminator yeah and it's uh, this one will last quite a bit uh, only this little cork is eight milliliters is eight milliliters for half a liter of water yeah and that one lasted for half of my collection so which means quite a lot of orchids so ah, yeah it's a great little thingy but anyways today I'm cleaning up my orchids and rearranging and trying to uh, yeah, put them into better positions uh, move stuff about and uh, I also will uh, take care of an orchid which has been annoying me for quite a while yeah but that will be another uh, later on in this video. As I said, Vanica Stylus Plumpet Blue needs to be cleaned. It dumped uh, loads of its, um, how shall we say, most part of its uh, oldest roots. Um, the Vanica Stylus seems to be a bit finicky. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to compare it to its cousin, Vanica Stylus Plumpet Price, yellowish one. Yeah, it's not doing bad, but uh, as you can see, it's sitting in charcoal, simply charcoal, and as you can see here, losing bottom leaves isn't the greatest of ideas. It indicates that something is going on with it, something faulty. So, um, well, I'm not gonna fuss about with it and remove it and do anything else with it. I'm just gonna leave it be and perhaps water him a little bit more frequently than I've been doing this far. But uh, it's kind of dry to keep up with it. Only a little flush on top here. Uh, doesn't make one summer, so to speak. It's a Swedish expression. One bird doesn't make a summer. Anyways, this guy didn't like it either. I think it was overwatered <laughs> instead, but we need to give this guy a decent root system again. So, just gonna cut off what's bad, and that's not a big deal. I always been doing this with my banders. Every once in a while, clean up the roots, and they were doing great, and they were blooming uh, at a frequent rate. So. So they were, the method was okay to keep them in a glass vase. So, just clean it off and I'll get back. I'll be back. <laughs> well, this is where we're at. Looking great. Easy to water, easy to flush, easy to shower. And it sticks. So, it stays really great and uh, solid in there so all I need to do is pour some water into the glass cylinder and simply pour it out <laughs> after one hour's time or so when the leaves I was about to say uh, I mean when the roots are saturated enough they look kind of healthy the ones left so now it's got plenty of room to grow some new ones and I mean for the old ones to branch down there and they will they certainly will until yeah. Next year, perhaps, I will get this thingy out again from its cylinder and clean it up. Now, let's move over to the, yeah, the subject planned for today. Yeah, shall we? So, guys, mounting time. And um, what am I going to mount? Yay. And on what we shall see. I'm gonna mount this creature. Why do I say I call it creature? The Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. From Kargi. Kargi. <laughs> I had it for, um, yeah, one and a half. No. Yeah, about one and a half years now. Um, 
<laughs> in September, while visiting uh, Karge at the Orchid, uh, Orchid Show in Lund, uh, I saw that they were selling similar ones, similar sized ones. Let's see if you can see how big it actually is. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's only durable uh, without flashlight. So, here. Yeah, it's getting good size now. And I got it as a flowering size one with only simply uh, one or two, three perhaps canes, and one little bit shorter one, and one lying at the bottom of the box. So, um, I was a little bit, or shall I say, a lot disappointed. Uh, it wasn't a bargain, really. Kind of uh, 32 euro for it, for three canes, and one lying at the bottom of the box. So, uh, yeah, not the best uh, of orders, really. But anyways, back to the to the uh, topic. Uh, I mean, um, while there, I saw that they were selling similar sized ones, like this one. So, now, at least, it should have reached the maturity size. A little new growth there as well coming. So now it's been sitting in water, soaking for uh, 30 minutes. And you want to know why I'm gonna mount this guy today? This is the Fallon. Sorry to say, but I bet this guy is the Fallon. I treated it with the SMC spray last week. Can you imagine, guys? Last week. Still. New scale infestation already. Scale breakout. Everywhere. It was totally clean last week. So I believe this one was hanging, usually hangs um, half a meter on top of uh, a few cacleos. All of them now affected by scale, severely. Uh, only in that area, in that particular area, that's where the scale are lurking today. So in order to um, pinpoint it, I need to do something about this guy. I've been, I've been too, far too afraid, far too scared to touch it since it had loads of goodly good roots down here and they will, uh, most part of them, shall run off and die if I report it and, yeah. Uh, dig into this mass of roots um, and look at it was hiding down here in the root system so that's where they came from not the longest of transportation from here to up here so yeah that looks really nice roots coming out so it's, uh, it may be the best the very best of times to uh, take care of it Strange as it seems, so and sounds. So it, this one is going to be mounted. Yeah, as I said. So let's clean him off. Um, if you read about it in the care guides, um, if you Google it, I mean, um, you find information about it that it should be sitting in a somewhat well-drained media, and it it also um suggests bag moss, which is the main part of this medium it's sitting in. It's a good kind of bag moss, really. Good strands. So it makes it a little bit fluffy. Better than if I would have uh, used my poor quality bag moss, I believe. But it also keeps loads of unwanted stuff. And if I mount it without any bag moss or such to it, I will be able to... Um, Keep an eye on it and take control of the scale. And if I remove it from its spot in the window, it will probably not affect the tree to get layers again. We shall see, we shall see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to clean this one off and um, under my cap and, and uh, we shall see what it looks like. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to show you a few examples on epidendrums sitting in the cabinet mounted without any kind of sort of uh, medium to it. 
And I really did get the idea from a guy at the Orchid Society, a uh, member. Whoa, look at this one. This guy is actually growing its roots through the actual mount. But that, that one is a Brassavola Cuxulada. Ah, look at it. Uh, but anyways, wrong orchid. <laughs> Let's just move this one so we can see a little bit better. Um, whoop, somewhere. Alright, let's now look at it. This guy is uh, the ba -ba, ba -ba, da -da, ep <laughs> Epidendrum Facardum. Yay! Don't touch me. <laughs> it's hanging bare rooted uh, with just a slight amount of uh, sphagnum. <sighs> Barely noticeable <laughs> to the um, uh, 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 clay brick. Yes? But it's not doing, um, it's not in growing stage at the moment. Uh, yeah, a little bit green rooted there, but not so bad. Yeah. I should just not forget to order it <laughs> as often as I, I um, <clears throat> currently am forgetting it. But anyways, that was one. Uh, do I have more these guys? Uh, uh, um, Epidendrum for card. <sighs> Where are you? Uh, uh, uh. No, I don't think so. Uh, oh, yeah, that was the one. Uh, but I do keep Bresavola, uh, 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 no dosa, I think. Yeah, it's no dosa, and it's really in great growing stage, uh, according to its roots here. <laughs> Look. So, anyways, that one had loads of spagnos on top of it, so, yeah, never mind. That one is growing great without... Uh, any particular amount of moss, so uh, almost bare rooted. So that's gonna be great. Yay. Ah! I moved. I don't know if that was wise or not, but I did move the uh, uh, little guy, Epidendrum uh, Nocturnum Miniardum, into this cabinet since it was getting far too dry in the living room. So now it's finally developing a bud correctly. It was all drying out, so I just, uh, yeah, just try this out. But uh, I'm not sh so sure. We we'll just, well, we shall see about this guy. It doesn't look all that great. But we shall see. We shall see what to do with it. Anyways, uh, step aside from the topic again. But, yeah, you see my point. I think it's going to do great in here. Mounted. Parkinsonianums lives in a tropical environment, tropical climate, uh, in a rainforest. Needs about 75 to 80% humidity. And it's an epiphyte, so, which means that it can uh, gather uh, humidity and water through the air into the roots so they don't really need any kind of medium if provided good amount of humidity and uh, and, and dew and such so and it's also a hot grower and so on and so forth and it's uh, well known for its uh, extremely breathtaking, intoxicating fragrance on its flowers appearing during night time mostly. So it's also a nocturne variety of the Epidendrum genus with large white flowers, pendant flower spikes and pendant growth as you can see. These guys can grow kind of long and um, this one has been developing nicely lately even though the scale infestation. So let's just clean this guy off and we should found a suitable mount there among, amongst the, uh, the ones in, in the box. Yeah. So let's get started. Now I put this guy uh, somewhat um, uh, yeah, almost to the middle yes and a little bit of thread here under here 
to keep it, secure it a bit more. And a couple of laps around it, all across the roots. Over the roots, to secure it. Yeah. Maybe one more lap here to really keep it in place. Now to the back side, and yeah, this one leaf's gonna fall. It doesn't matter, loads of new leaves are coming. All right, now see to that this guy makes it pleased. <laughs> yeah, since I need to lean it towards something in order not to crack this little guy. Yes. Yeah, it works. Uh, kind of okay. Yeah, I'm not pressing it to the tree. Yeah. Now I'm going to tie it. And after that I'm going to seal it. Uh, where is it? Uh, thread is barely noticeable to the eye. Uh, need to have good eyesight, which I haven't anymore. Do I need to seal it? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It um, scares me to see how fragile its leaves, uh, leaf joints really are. I mean, they may easily break and drop. So, maybe. It wasn't so surprising that we found the, the leaf at the bottom of the box after all. Fragile as they are. But I bet it's the uh, oldest leaves which are dropping off. So, some room left here. Most part of the room is for the roots. Now this one needs to uh, acclimatize and adjust again in the cabinet. But I think the cabinet's uh, conditions will be ideal for it. A lot better than in the dry-ish room temperature. Or maybe it will take loads of time for it to adapt and recover after this treatment. But we shall see. It remains to be seen. As I say, um, a guy at my orchid society, he uh, He's keeping his uh, Parkinsonianum inside the cabinet and it works fine. And it blooms on a regular basis for him, so yeah, I think that's the deal, so. Well guys, um, I think that I like you. Oh uh, yeah. Start up conversations with me and yeah, and most of all, thanks for being here and supporting this little channel up north. And if we don't talk before Christmas, um, I wish you happy holidays. But I do hope and believe that I will pull before Christmas. Yeah, we shall see. A little something at least. All right. Take care, guys. I love you. Bye-bye.